I'd just like to point out that these videos I'm doing about Tune ECU is me documenting my own journey of Tune ECU and what I found with it and what I'm doing with it. I don't claim to be an expert at it, so don't take my word for gospel. So hopefully you will find out some little tips and you may learn things and you might even be entertained by it. Time is the most precious resource we have and it takes a lot of time messing about with this sort of thing. So it is well worth the money to actually pay people who know what they're doing to do it. And there are some great maps out there that you can buy. Unless you're like me and you have to know how things work and you like to do things yourself. And of course, it makes good content as well. I've just put a speed twin motor into my Triumph Bobber and I've copied the tables over for the fuel and the ignition. I've copied and pasted them onto the Bobber map. But I can't do that with the ETV tables because they're, they're different tables. So I'm going to have to do that manually if I want to adjust it. It's okay at the moment, but there are a few things I want to tweak. So I'm going to show you how I'm doing that now. And I have found some really cool stuff on Tune ECU to help me do this. Right, so I've actually got my bobber map on here. What I did discover the other day, which I didn't know about, is if I just press that where the little tables are indicated, you can jump to whatever one you want to save you scrolling through. And then when you're actually on the ETV tables themselves, you can flip between by pressing here. No, not that one, sorry. How do I get out of that? You can flip between the different ones for different gears. So you can actually save different ETV tables for different gears. At the moment, they're actually all the same for every gear. But I guess that would be handy for if you like, for on the highway, when you're in like fifth and sixth gear, you might want it a little bit smoother. Or you might want it aggressive in the lower gears for acceleration. Or maybe just second gear, you want it a little bit smoother if you do a lot of urban riding around tight corners and stuff like that. Right, what I'm gonna do now, is I'm going to start modifying my ETV tables. It's a good idea if you do this or do any work on the tables to actually have a backup copy of the map you've already got. So this one is already saved as Speed Bobber. So what I'm going to do now is I'll hit map, save, and I'll save it as another name in that same directory. Because um, we're working on the ETV tables, I'm going to call it Speed Bobber. ETV2 because I've already got an ETV one there I was working on so this is going to be ETV2 so I save that and just check that that's what's so open it down there so now I'm not going to damage the other map I've already got and when I've got this ha how I want it by riding the bike and now it's good I can actually save use this one as my map and make another copy of this alter that and gradually go step it up like that if you know what I mean. So, the other thing I've decided I'm going to do is because I've got ETV1, which is road, and ETV2, which is rain, I'm going to alter everything on rain. And that way, when I'm actually on the bike, I can just flip between road and rain to see the comparisons. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to... Copy this table, ETV1, and then go to ETV2, hit table, and hit paste. Now, these two tables are exactly the same. Uh, I can tell that by hitting table, compare, and I'll compare it with... So you can compare the tables between the different gears as well. So I'm going to compare it with ETV1 and it says tables are identical. So now both my tables are identical. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start modifying table two, which is rain. So then when I'm on the bike, I can switch between the two. Right, so what I've actually done off of camera is I've modified ETV2 a little bit. So if I compare this ETV1 there, if I compare that with ETV2, you'll see the cells I've modified. I'm not going to tell you what I've done, I've just tweaked them a little bit to give it a little bit more response, So, but I'm not going to get into how I did that or what values I've put in there. The point of this is to let you know that you can use your second table to make your adjustments on, and then you can switch it 
over between the two when you're actually out on the bike. And then if you need your rain table back again, which I've wiped over this, I'll go back into the original map which I've already saved, I'll copy that and then bring that back and put it back over here. So if you've always got a backup copy of your maps, you're never going to lose your data. So now I'm going to flash it onto the bike and go out for road test. Right, I'm just going to hit record on my little phone on a data logger. Is that recording? I can't see. Yeah, that's recording. I'll bung that in a bag. And we'll try and ride under different conditions. So I've just been riding with my road map. I'm going to flip over to rain now and see what the difference is. We'll see if I can feel a noticeable difference. It is a little bit more responsive how I want it. <laughs> so that's how I'm going about modifying my ATV tables. I'm going to tweak them again a little bit now and oh, I'm also going to take the rev limiter up to 7400. Actually I'll show you how to do that now. Right so what you do is when you're on the map screen you hit map, hit parameters and that will bring up your rev limit and the thermo flam you can change as well so we're just going to take that straight up to 7400. You can actually turn the speed limit off, it's limited at 179 k's an hour but you have to buy another license to be able to do that, which I don't have yet. I am going to be doing that because I want to be hitting speeds greater than that on the drag strip. So for now, I'll we'll just set that to 7400, hit OK. And now, well, I need to save, I'll save that map. And now I need to flash that onto the bike and then that will adjust the rev limiter. So now I'll flash that map onto the bike and go for a road test. Now I'm just going to ride it quite a bit, get some data logs, take notice of what the air fuel ratio is and how the bike's performing. And then I'll probably alter the fuel in a little bit. I might get involved in the ignition timing, not really sure yet. So that's that. Have a great day.